Comedian and podcaster Joe Rogan defended Green Bay Packers quarterback Aaron Rodgers for lying about his vaccination status following a positive COVID infection. Let's take a look. He's not vaccine hesitant because he's like a conspiracy theorist. There's a, what is the the uh, ingredient? Propyl ethylene glycol, some shit. I don't remember the actual term for but it. But he has a reaction to it. He has, he has a legit allergy to this stuff. And it's in shampoos. It's it's a it's a commonly used mm. chemical. The star quarterback, along with receiver Alan Lazard, were each fined fourteen thousand six hundred and fifty dollars. In addition to the team being fined three hundred thousand dollars, this according to the a league source following the NFL's review of the Packers' COVID nineteen protocols. So they found that um, both uh, Rogers and Lazard had, I guess, attended a Halloween party, and there was. You know, and they didn't follow the protocols that you're supposed to follow per NFL rules for vaccinated versus unvaccinated players. And uh, I mean, fair enough. You know, look, you're found to violate the the rules and the rules have fines. And so they end up um, getting hit with those fines. But what did you guys think of what Joe Rogan had to say about this allergy to the vaccine? Yeah, that sounds like a legitimate uh, as, as as far as I as, as long as it is legitimate, right? That's right. a that's a um, and and and, and Rogers apologized. So he he should not have said. I think he did, and maybe it was not intentional, but I, I think it was misleading, saying, "Well, I've been immunized," and then what he meant by that was not that he'd taken the vaccine, but that he had you know taken something to boost his immunity, which is the, the, not. It was the kind of it's the kind of fib that you can only recognize in hindsight, right? Like mm-hmm. it depends on what the definition. So he should is, not is. have done that. But and he said he, you know, he apologized for misleading people. That's fine. So th- that's all. I mean, I don't, I, I don't know what the Halloween. Maybe the policy is you can't go to a Halloween party. Probably some of these policies are so strict. Um, I don't think. Although they're usually masked. The, this is a Halloween party. Uh, <laughs> but they were uh, they the were costume. unmasked. Yeah, I think yeah. they were unmasked. And the issue was that the va- unvaccinated costume, players are supposed to be masked. I mean, people need to get and over so it. Why. I mean, when is this? <laughs> we can do this forever. Like, we need to. Everyone who wants to be as protected as they as they feel they should be can do that. Everyone else, like, just get over it already. It's like it's. <laughs> we, we could do this for the rest of our lives. Poor Robbie, you're like so over the pandemic. I mean, hey, I listen, mean, I, so to be clear, I. I was over it like <laughs> after the initial two weeks when they said we would be over. Um, I'm right, like, okay, I right. did my two weeks, I'm done. But, uh, but, uh, but, and I've done every. I've, I'm vaccinated. I've had a breakthrough case. I, I'll get a booster if they want me. Whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. Except I don't want to wear a mask anymore because I hate them. <laughs> That's so. your line, right? That's it's the masking. Um, well, you know, and and we, we see with the with the NFL. You know, obviously they're having this issue with the Packers team, and and they're getting over that. And you know, I, I'm really curious to see how they're going to treat Aaron Rodgers moving forward. If he's going to be treated as unvaccinated, or if they're going to say, well, you've already recovered. You're fine now. You know, I'm interested to see what happens or if they modify their rules. We do know the NBA, for example, the 76ers, they've got four people down right now with COVID, all four of them vaccinated. You know, so it's just it's one of the uh, yeah, Robbie, I don't know. I don't know when they're going to finally say, okay, never uh, do what you. Yeah. And these guys are not take back our rights by force, Kim. (laughs) Oh, boy. Oh, boy. We're about to get canceled. (laughs) Okay, well, and by that I mean right strongly mean worded legal, editorials le- and legal, you mean legal <laughs> force, yeah. legal, yeah. By that we must but, take action, and by that I mean I'm by, going to complain for- about it vocally on our television show, in my magazine, and on Twitter. By the legal right. force okay. of okay. our <laughs> our virtue and righteousness. Yes. yes, just making sure we're real clear on that, right? Yeah. Uh, well, on Tuesday, let's talk about this. Pfizer CEO Albert Borla told DC-based think tank. Uh, the Atlantic Council, that people who spread misinformation on COVID-19 are criminals and responsible for millions of deaths. And he goes on to say the pandemic will be over when, here you go, Robbie, the pandemic will be over when the unvaccinated get the jab. This as Pfizer urges the FDA to authorize booster shots for all adults 18 and over, which would broaden who is eligible for a third shot. So he's saying it is when the unvaccinated all get the all get the jab. Plus, then uh, now there's going to be boosters that are going to be available potentially for everyone. Um, First of all, you know, I take uh, obviously issue with what he's saying about how people who spread misinformation Uh, whatever his definition of misinformation is, 
are responsible for millions of deaths. I mean, since the vaccine has been available to the areas of the world where it's been available, I don't think millions of people have died uh, since the vaccine has been available. That's a good point. And the people who are responsible for, let's say, hundreds of thousands of deaths are the Pfizer CEO who will, who will not, uh, you know, distribute the vaccine, you know, free of, you know, free of charge or at cost uh, around the world, who will not, you know, back off of their IP protections and, and allow it to be right. produced in, in, a, in other countries. So if he, if he wants to, you know, uh, you know, start putting on a ledger, you know, who's responsible for, for more deaths, I, I, don't, I don't think he's going to like how that, how that turns out. Well, it's just another attack on journalism. I mean, again, who gets to decide what is misinformation, what is information, um, you know, that because a lot of times people will say something, people will say, oh, that's misinformation. And then a month later, it's, oh, actually, it turns out to be true. And now everyone in mainstream media is allowed to talk about it. So, you know, right. And, cer it, it, right. and certainly yeah, nobody and certainly nobody wants to hear from the Pfizer CEO on on these <laughs> on these questions. And right. and it, right. it's completely unhelpful uh, to the conversation for him to be saying anything remotely like that. Of course, I mean, a of course, it's not criminal. But B, whenever anybody says, you know, uh, the, va the vaccines are effective at preventing uh, at, and reducing death and hospitalization, you know, you'll have a bunch of people say, well, you're a, you're a Pfizer shill. You know, you're a, you're a big pharma shill. It's like, no, it's the, the problem in general with big pharma is not that their drugs don't work, that their medicines don't work. The, the problem with big pharma is that their medicines do work. And because of the profit motive, they keep them from people who need them. And so having the, the Pfizer CEO jump into a culture war like this is, is, is not going, is not, it, it's, it's not going to convince anybody and it actually make, makes it harder to have a reasonable conversation. Yeah. One thing I do want to point out is that they are now urging the FDA to authorize boosters for absolutely everyone. The FDA is able to do this without reconvening their scientific advisory panel. Um, I watched that meeting a couple of times. It was eight hours long. It's available for anyone to watch on YouTube on the uh, on FDA's um, YouTube channel. And the advisors were very specific as to why they did not want these boosters available to everyone. They were worried about myocarditis, rates of myocarditis in particularly younger people. And they were worried that younger men in particular would start getting these boosters and that would potentially result in you know, higher rates of myocarditis. This comes on the heels of Scandinavia and now France, all uh, withholding Moderna specifically for younger people under the age of 30. And now here in this country, we're not having that discussion whatsoever. Um, and, and they're wanting to get um, boosters. Now this is for Pfizer specifically, not the Moderna booster. So we'll see what happens. You know, I'm sure if Pfizer gets it, Moderna's going to want it, right? I mean, it's kind of... Yeah. I, I think the myocarditis issue should obviously should continue uh, to be looked at. And, and, and certainly, you know, for, for, for young, uh, young men who aren't at serious, uh, you know, teenage and younger who aren't at serious risk of a negative uh, COVID health outcome anyway, I, you know, I certainly see that argument. But the caution, the over caution of FDA people um, does not does not make me is not necessarily because caution is warranted in general, right? They're still sitting on they have yet to approve a trillion different COVID testing um, uh, methods and protocols that would be great if people had it. it would be great if they had them a year ago. They they've dragged their feet on this because they're incompetent, risk averse bureaucrats. So the the fact that they think this doesn't matter a lot to me, right? And there's the manupravir or whatever. Therapy, you know, there are these therapies that uh, they need to hurry up and get now. You know, get in, them out now. Like people are catching, like thousand people plus died yesterday. Like right, like hurry up. Yeah. Every like, minute like, counts. Yeah. and there, well, we'll meet at some point. We'll yeah. let you take this life-saving drug if we feel like it. Right. The the numbers are in. Just give the people, like, yeah. give it to people. You can save lives. Ridiculous. Tomorrow on Rising, Lieutenant Colonel Daniel Davis joins us to discuss the biggest issues facing our military service members. And Will Jawando and Amy Tarkanian will also be with us. They'll weigh in on the biggest news of the day. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you never miss a video. And we will see you guys tomorrow. All right.